Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be working on another tutorial and that tutorial is going to be on well mechanics from satisfactory let's say it's going to be quite a few parts to get this one done and in this part we're going to be working on setting up the basis and creating support poles for conveyor belts and the second part will be on the actual conveyor belts and connecting them across and making them rotate and all that but this first part may not seem very flashy and may not seem very interesting, but it's absolutely necessary for the end result. So let's get straight into it. So to start off, we're going to launch, in my case, Unreal Engine 5.1. So we'll wait for that to launch. And once it's ready, we're going to be using, once it's ready, we're going to be using the first person template this time. So let's wait for that to load. So inside of games you want to select first person we don't need starter content although we might use the materials for it but in our case because it's a, because it's a tutorial we'll just keep the materials basic so we won't use this for this time leave it a maximum we're not going to be doing much as far as materials go and let's just call this project satisfactory let's create it and i'll see you guys once it's open okay so the project's ready. So the first thing we're going to do as usual is we're going to create a new folder for our project with satisfactory. Inside of this folder, we're gonna need two other ones. First assets and the second one for blueprints. Now inside of assets, we're going to start off by importing our assets here. So there'll be a Google Drive link below obviously we're going to start off with just the four ones for the support. So I've just dragged those in and that's what we're going to be working on. No need to worry too much about this. It's just going to be visual. It's not that important to be fair anyway. Everything should be set up. We're still preparing shaders. That's why we don't see anything. And we also want to make a material folder. So material and next up is our blueprints. So we finished setting up or importing our assets. Now we can start immediately with making our blueprints. So I'm going to start by making everything we use for this video and then we'll move on to creating everything inside. So we'll start with a blueprint, which is going to be our character. And we're going to call first person because we want to create a child of our first person character. So we'll call that FPS underscore satisfactory. Now we can leave that as is. Next, we're going to create another blueprint. Now this blueprint is going to be the basis of everything that we're going to make from here on out. It's going to be an actor and we're going to call it A underscore builds. And from this, we'll then make uh, conveyor belts, constructors and all that stuff. So we're going to start by then obviously creating a child no, actually, no, we won't create the child straight away because we need to first create our build base class and then we can create the rest. So that's what we're going to need here. Before we go any further, we're actually going to create our inputs as well. So let's do that. Create a folder called inputs. And inside of it, as usual with inputs, we want an input mapping context. So IMC underscore, we'll call it satisfactory as well. And then we want to create quite a few input actions so inside of input again an input action and we'll call ia underscore confirm so this is going to be once we start showing a build we left click to apply it so it actually gets constructed we can duplicate this and this one will be deconstruct so ia deconstruct and can get it i think one a few more times actually another one we're going to call ia underscore object one and a duplicate of this which we'll call object two both of these are going to be used pretty much for the different inputs but for now we're only going to have the first one active but we're going to set up the beginning of the second one even if we're not going to write the blueprint and finally the last one we need is going to be once again an input it's going to be IA underscore scroll. So object one will be the one input two. It's pretty much the hotbar. 
scroll will be scroll wheel for if we want to rotate the build deconstruct will be calling if we want to start deconstructing items and confirm will confirm a deconstruct or confirm a build so we go into our context appeared on the other side for me and we're going to add all the functions so we'll start with confirm which we will select left click we're then going to add um, deconstruct as well which will be f for next we'll want the we'll put the scroll scroll just scroll your mouse wheel then we want object one we can just put one there and just select it here and object two which will be two so that's done for our input mapping context we don't need it anymore we can close that and one last thing we'll do before we get into the actual blueprints is backing assets we're going to make our materials that way we don't have to touch any of this again so we only need here for now we're going to need only one material and that material is going to be m hologram think of it as what the material what the object will look like before we actually place it so the thing we need to do here we need to make sure that hologram is set to translucent and another thing we need to do is we need to go down this list and look for, well, for now we won't be using too much of it, but we need to look for instant static mesh. And we need to look for, if I remember well, it should be, um, we're looking for spline mesh. So these two. If you don't take this, the uh, default material will stay on everything that you apply this, if it's an instant static mesh or a spline mesh. So apply. And what we're going to be using here to make this material is pretty simple. We're going to be getting a one vector, which we'll put in the opacity, and we'll leave it at, I like 0.6. You're free to change this. It's up to personal taste. It doesn't change anything for the application. We want to get a panner node, which we'll put at speed 0.02, just so that it's very slow. It's just to give a little bit of an effect to what we're looking at. We're going to multiply it by five. And we're then going to plug this into a texture sample. Now the reason for this is that it kind of um, modifies the UV so that it's, uh, what's it called, uh, tiled out. And because what we're going to be using here is a material that I think already exists and it's just typing grid. And we're looking for widget grid vertex color. So select this and you should have something that looks like that. We then want to because this is black and white, we want to subtract here. And we want to subtract 0.9 because we don't want it to be completely invisible. And then we want to get a parameter, uh, sorry, a vector four, which will convert to a parameter and call that simply color. We'll set a default value to blue because by default we want it to be blue. Or you can put it green if you prefer. I think blue looks a bit more easy on the eyes. And we want to add these two together, not multiply, but add, because we want it to be visible all everywhere. Just, it gives us this effect. So it's nothing too complicated, but it just kind of gives it a bit more of a feel than just a blank blue color. So we're gonna apply that, we're finished here. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a material instance as well, which we'll call MI hologram, which is gonna be the default one, but we're gonna make a second one, which we'll call hologram for delete, which will just be if we hover over an item we're trying to destroy, it will just automatically select that one instead of having to change color and stuff like that in our parameter, we can just tell it to select between these two. We'll also, we'll also later have a different one, which will be for if we're placing an item and it isn't valid, then we'll have to say, careful, uh, change the color to red. So we'll duplicate this and call it delete at the end. Open it up and we'll simply set its color to something like orange. We don't want to do red. Red we want to leave mainly for if the build can't be made. So save that. And with that, all our materials are now set up. So we can go back to blueprints. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up our builds because inside of the player character, we'll be referencing some functions here. So we need to have that done first. So let's grab that here and I'm just going to open it on the other side to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So inside of the builds, we're going to need 
very little as far as materials go. We mainly want to have one thing and that's going to be our material instance that we just made. So in construct script, we're going to say create dynamic material instance. And the base will obviously be MI hologram. So make sure you choose this one. Doesn't really matter too much, but by default, it'll be blue then. We want to promote this to a variable. We'll call MI underscore hologram. Now this is going to be used across all of the children as well. So we can compile this and save. And that does it pretty much for anything we're going to do in the construct script and also the event graph. We don't really use anything here, so we can delete all that. Now what we need to do is this here, the components we're not going to touch because the base class is never going to be used alone. We're only going to be making children of it. This is just how we grouped up of the main functions that they could possibly have. So for that, we're going to need a few functions. The first one we'll go for is create build. So think of this one as when the player presses the key bind one, two, three on his hotbar to select a build that he wants to make. We'll call this, we'll make a category for it. We'll call placement. Um, we can start off by duplicating this four times to be fair. The first one will be called, the second one will be called cancel build, which if you're building, you call cancel build if you press another build to remove the old one. Then we want to have another one which we'll call place build. So this is if we confirm with the left click that we want to place it. Now, this is the only one that actually needs an output. And this output is used to say, well, if we can build, if we can build it, then it's positive. If not, then we can't place it. So we don't place it. So we'll just leave it by default true for now. The next function we'll copy from cancel because we don't need the return value is going to be destroy build. So this is if it already exists, it's already been placed. We want to destroy it later. So if, for instance, we use the deconstruct mechanic. Next up, we have our scroll functions. So we'll call scroll build. And it'll take an input of mouse input here, we'll call it. And it's going to be a float. So this will put into scroll or a category called scroll. We then want to duplicate this exact function and we'll call it instead of scroll build, we'll call scroll build custom. Now this in the case of a uh, conveyor support or conveyor pole where we want it to be able to change in height. So this is if you hold for instance control down, that's what we'll set up later. Then we want to have another function which is a is buildable. So this will be for all the checks if we can actually place the actual item. So we'll create something called conditions here. Category called conditions. This is going to be the only one for now. As I'm kind of making this video, I'm still working on where I'm going next. So that's why some of the stuff might be up in the air. But most of the bases should be solid and won't need too much changing later. So it is buildable. We need a return value as well, which we'll call return value. And it's going to be a Boolean. We can turn this to pure. We don't need it to be uh, on the executable part. So leave that as it is. And we need two more functions. One we'll call update location. And it's going to go in a, pr a category called update, obviously. And this one is pretty much just when we're placing the build, we up want to update the location we're aiming at, right? Simple as that. And one final function, which we'll call set all materials. And this is just a quick way that we'll use to swap between the is valid, is not valid locations when we're moving or trying to place an item. So we can leave it at, we want to actually, sorry, we'll put an input, which will be material override. And it's going to take in a material interface. So make sure you get material interface specifically. And it's going to take a Boolean, which we'll call default, default, sorry, like that. And this is going to be a Boolean. So this is if we want to reset it pretty much. So with that, all our functions are set up. Let's go through them individually and actually make them. For now, some of them will be quite simple because we don't have anything set up. Like for instance, when we place a build, we don't have any resources. We're just going to create it. If we destroy it the same, we're just going to destroy it. Nothing complicated. So we'll start off with obviously in order, 
we'll start with create build. So by default, create build has nothing. We're not going to do anything here because most of the create builds will be kind of custom made for each of them. We just want to have one function that we can call. So we don't need to touch create build. For cancel build though, we're just going to call delete. We're going to say destroy actor and it will destroy the actor. For place build, what we're going to do very simply is inside of place build, we'll leave this as true, but we want to call set all materials. And for set all materials, we want to say default. Next is destroy build. And destroy build, just like uh, cancel for now, is going to be destroy actor. So moving on, the scroll build is probably the simplest one in this case. Well, no, actually, sorry. It's a simple one, but it's probably the hardest one we have up until now because we actually have to do something. So we'll get actor rotation because in this case, every single one we're making will do this except for our conveyor belt, but we'll see that later. So what we want to do is want to break this, uh, sorry, break the rotator, not the into axis. And we're simply going to add well, we're going to get our mouse input here and the mouse input will come in one or minus one. And we're going to multiply this by 45. So let's go and do that. And this will go here. So pretty much if we scroll down, it'll do minus 45. If we scroll up, it'll be 45. And we then want to make rotator. And make rotator is pretty simple. We just plug in all the different pieces. We just want the Z here to change because we're not going to be setting up any changing of the uh i think it's the pitch we're just going to leave it as is we're just going to always keep that flat and then we want to simply call set actor rotation and that'll be our scroll build so what we need to do for the custom is we don't want to do anything the custom is only going to be used in specific cases so just like the build we won't touch it unless we actually need to but as a child actor we'll use is buildable for now we'll leave empty just like the other ones we'll want to check inside of the individual ones if it's valid or not and next for the update location we're simply going to actually i forgot earlier but we need to add an input and that input will be the hit information so we're going to type hit information for the variable name and it's going to be of type hit results what we want to do then is break as you typically do, typically do. And what we'll do for the impact point is we want to make a vector snapped to grid because we don't want it to be completely free. We want to have it move kind of in in the, like in a grid manner. So we want it to be a grid of 50. This is up to what you want, but I think 50 works pretty well. Most of the conveyor belt stuff that I'm going to give you is going to be 100 by 100. So having it be half of that is pretty good. And we want to use this snapped grid to simply set actor location. So in most cases, update location will never actually change. It's as simple as this. We just want to move the objects around, right? The only case that I can think of right now where it might be different is for our, well, for our conveyor belts, it's 100% going to be different. We need to modify it a lot. But for the also for things like splitters or mergers that go alongside the conveyor belts, we'll need this as well. So the last thing we need to do is our set all materials. Now it's in update, but it's not going to be called in update, but we'll leave it where it is for now. It's not very important. It doesn't matter too much. So what we want to do here is we want to get default scene. So our scene root there in our actual components. And we want to call get children components. Make sure you include all descendants. And we're going to do a for each loop with this. Now, this for each loop is pretty simple. We're going to go through it and we're going to check if it is a static mesh. So, to do that, we'll cast to static mesh component. And if it is a static mesh, we want to get the number of materials and run through them to see it to set them all to the same thing so if you want to override this with the default for instance you want a default material to be different than all the same 
which in most case you would, right? Especially we're going to have to do that when we have the conveyor belts. But for this, for the basic one for everything, and especially because this is a tutorial on how to make the logic and not make it look pretty, obviously, as you can see, it's very low poly stuff we're using. So for our sake, we're just going to set them all to the same thing. So we're going to put this into a for loop. Make sure you put it in the last index. There. And we're going to add a reroute here just so we can call it at the end. Just put another one there. And we're then going to call set material. So attach that to the loop body, attach the index element here. And for the material, we'll do a select node. And we're going to take in default. So this is the get default that we have here. On true, we're going to search for default. We just have default material, which we'll use. And for the false, we'll use the override material. So with that, we finished all our functions here. Nothing else to do in the build. Next, we need to set up our actual FPS character. But first, we'll create our children or our children blu child blueprints. So we'll call a underscore builds and we'll call this one, uh, we'll call it support because that's what it is. It's going to be the support for the conveyor belts. So here we're actually going to have to finally add some components because it's not going to be as simple as that. So for the components, what we'll do, we'll start off with a static mesh and we'll call the static mesh base. Now we can't replace it, which we do, don't want to at all because we want to make sure that this exists for the parent class that has the mid-send materials. We want two of these, the one for the base and the one for the top. And then we're going to add an instanced static mesh. So I call them ISM and then call it in our case mid because it's going to be the middle part. And for the top, we want to add a scene component. So this one specifically and we'll call it attach point. For now, we don't use this in this video. We won't be using the attach point, but it's going to be pretty much the point where we want the conveyor belts to be placed on, let's say. So as far as the setup goes for top is top is the only one we want to actually touch here. We want to turn you into, I think it's just support now. Yeah, so just support. And this will place it like that. For the attach point, we want it to be placed at 50 so right in the middle here so last thing we'll do is for all of these we're going to set their collision presets to custom and we want to make sure that they have no collision selected so this is that by default our line trace that we're going to be using doesn't hit them so custom and no collision the same for this as well custom and no collision because we'll be able to change this at runtime Next, what we want to do is for the ISM, we can actually, for the install static mesh, we can set it up already. And we're looking for support and mid. So by default, this won't be visible and that's fine. It's not a problem. The first thing we want to do in the blueprints now that we've set this up is we want to go into our construct script and we're going to get a reference to MI hologram. Sorry, we should have that. There we go. And my hologram so this is in our parent that's why it's not visible here and we want to get a reference to each of these except the attach point oh no sorry just lost the top one and we're going to say set material now because by default they only have one we don't need to bother with anything here it's just very simple and we'll set them all to the mi hologram so we can't do a line too well here there we go so that's all our material set up for them and now we need one thing, one variable, and that's going to be the height override. It's going to be a float. And by default, we'll leave it at zero. The only functions we need to override here. So in this drop down, we're going to look for the create build. We're going to look for the place build. Where is it? It's a bit lower there. Place build. And the custom scroll. So. So scroll build custom. Now, 
we need to create a function first before we do anything, which is going to be called static mesh by height. And pretty much what this will do is it will go through these and we're going to tell it which ones to show, which ones to hide based on how high our height override is. So let's compile and save. And what we'll do here is, so the first thing we want is we need to make sure that our ISM mid is clear because we're going to be adding instances and we need to make sure that every time we try and add instances, we remove the old ones. Then what we want to do is based on our height override, we're going to say if it's double equal to zero, if it's double equal to zero, we only want the base or in our case, we'll use the top because the top is always going to be where the conveyor belt will rest. So for the top, we simply want to say set relative location and we're going to leave it at zero, zero. The reason for this is because it's going to move up if there's more than zero here. We then want to set the base and the ism hidden in game make sure we tick that connect it to and the last thing we need to do the last yeah the last thing we need to do is we need to set the static mesh here because this one has two we need to set it to support uh, sorry not that we want to set it to support the basic one apply there so this does it for our base one. It'll automatically be set up by itself, or at least when we call it, sorry. Next, we want to call these two again, and we want to make them visible, because if we're higher, then we might need both. Now, in the case of the ISM, if we don't hide it, it doesn't matter, because unless we actually call an instance, it's not going to be visible anyway. But we'll leave it like this. It's easier to remember then. So hide override again we need. I'm going to divide it by 50 because that's the height of each individual part. We want to truncate because we need to use it as an integer here. And we're then going to subtract one. Now this is that we convert the length into an actual index. We're then going to do a for loop, basic one, not a for each. And the last index will be our index output here. So for here, we're going to call a switch. And for the switch, we're going to simply have an in one pin, which is going to be zero. Pretty much think of it as saying, if the index is equal to zero, that means it's the first index. That means we have to do the base. And any other one, which will be called by default, will be the middle part. And then once our array is complete, we can do the top. So very simply, what we need to do is we need to call our base here and we need to say static mesh actually this shouldn't even be necessary we just need to make it so that this doesn't happen sorry so we need to call here from our ism we'll call add instance we just need to actually make sure that our base here is set up by default to support and but so i just realized that i did something kind of useless in my other project so for index, we need to multiply u by a vector 3, which we'll get here, or a vector, sorry, simply. By 50, the height again, we can split the transform and apply just the location because the rest is already relative anyway. So it's going to turn in everything by itself. For the top, we need to set our static mesh. And this time it's going to be support, but specifically the top part. Then we need to set its location. So just like here, grab this, but we need a height, our height override this time. Apply it there. And we're going to set relative location. And plug that in. And now we, oh, not that, sorry. Now we have set up our entire thing here for the different scenarios our thing can be. So with this function, we're going to be call it, calling it in our create build. So we can leave our create build here, that's fine. It doesn't really do anything, so it's not a problem. Actually, we'll remove it, it's useless. We want to call our static mesh by height, apply that here. We want to call in place build, we're simply going to call this by default. We don't need to remove that. But what we'll do 
is we want to get a reference to our different actors here. And we want to set collision enabled because if we don't do that, we can still walk through the object objects once they're placed. And they're going to be obviously collision enabled, query and physics. So compile. So that's our build and our place, our create build and our place done. For the custom scroll, so this is the one where we're going to be actually changing the height. So we're going to do times 50 out of the mouse input. Same as before, minus 50 or plus 50, depending on if we're going up or down. We want to add this to our height override. And then this value is simply going to be clamped because we don't want it to be, uh, sorry, let's just clamp float. We don't want it to be too high and we don't want it to be negative either. So the max is 150 what I put, you can put 200, that's fine. So we want to then save this as height override. So this, you can put any value you want. There's no actual physical limit because we have, it, it will scale up infinitely. There's no problem there. It's just more that there's no point in it going too high. So we just cap it at 150. And then we simply want to call our static mesh by height. Because this is actually the change, this is just the value. So we can compile and save, and with that, this is done. We finished our support. So we can close it. Next is getting the player to make this all work. Because currently right now, if we play, nothing happens. Well, first, if we play, we wouldn't even have the right character currently because the world settings are set like this. So we're just going to change it here to FPS satisfactory. If you don't have world settings, you can find it up here. If I remember well, you can just simply search for it. If I remember, I think it's in here. If I'm correct. Um, or is it here? I'm pretty sure it should be here normally. Yeah, so in the window, you simply search for world and it'll give you world settings if you don't have it and that should make it pop out here. So now that we have that, our player will actually spawn. So now we just need to make it so that it can actually do something. So open our player character. In event graph, we're going to start very simply by creating our inputs because currently we have no inputs set up or at least they won't appear because we haven't told them to. So for that, we want to get player controller. We want to get enhanced local input. And we're going to call add mapping context. So there we go. And for the mapping context, we want our satisfactory one. So we'll start off with our IA scroll. I'm just going to call all of them because we need to make some smaller functions eventually. For the scroll, we actually need a second one, but it's going to be the left control. So you can make a custom input as well for this, but for simple, for making it as simple as possible, we'll just leave this here as a simple left control. Next, we want the IA confirm. After that, we'll get IA uh, deconstruct and to finish we need the IA object 1 and IA object 2 there we go so we'll have both of these here let's move them a bit down because they're pretty simple so for the functions that we're going to be using so I think this is everything just to make sure yep that is everything so for the functions we need we're going to need one called spawn build which is going to take in a class so as an input because it's going to be create actor from class so we'll just call this variable class and instead of just typing in a class an actor here for instance and using this what we're going to do is we're going to specify our specific class so that is a a build and we make sure that we select the class reference the reason we do this is that if we have a um a variable that we want to set on uh, on spawn or exposed to spawn sorry then we actually have it appear once we plug this into our spawn actor from class so that's why we use it like that and as well if we want to select it we don't actually have to let's say our call spawn build here we don't have to select from every single thing we just have to select from our builds 
Next, we want a variable, uh, a function, sorry, for moving build. Another one for place build. Another one for cancel build. And two more, one for determine deletes. So this will be checking every time we pass over an object if we want to delete it or not. And finally, a line trace from channel. So we'll start with the line trace. That that's the one that's going to be most reused. So for the line trace, as with pretty much any line trace you've ever done, we want to get world location from the camera. We want to get the forward vector from the camera. We want to add this to a certain distance here. So we multiply our forward by a float. And I think 1500 will do the trick here. With that, we apply it here. We drag the world location and call line trace by channel. The start will be our world location. The end will be the end of the line that we shoot. And we simply need to leave it at this. So we're going to need a array here. So we're going to call make array. But we don't have our actor yet. So we're just going to do that in a second. So we now want a return. And for the return, simply attach our two outputs here. So that does it for our line trace. Let's go back to the spawn, start with the spawn. So if the spawn build, what we want to do is, well, actually, first we're going to make the variables because we need some variable references here. So the first variable we need is, is control down. So this is going to be used outside, not here. We can duplicate that and we're going to need something called item to build. And it's going to be of type a build. We're then going to need a second one of these, but this time we'll call it item to delete. And the last two variables we'll need for now is move build and delete build. And they need to be of type timer. So a timer handle here. And these will be pretty much used because we're going to be, instead of calling it on tick, we'll be using a timer. It's much easier to use and much, and a lot cheaper as far as uh, resources go. So in our spawn build, we'll start with the branch and the branch will be simply checking if our delete build is active. So we'll call is valid timer handle. So this is pretty much a check if we're currently trying to delete something then we'll stop doing that and spawn an item instead. So if it is valid, we want to cancel it. So we'll call clear it and invalidate timer by handle. So do that here. And then we want to call, we'll just reroute it to make it cleaner. And we want to call item to build. And we'll call convert. Now, normally if you have an item to build valid, you can't have a delete build at the same time. So we could separate this but just to make it easier to read. We'll leave it like that. We're going to call simply cancel build. If it already exists, we want to stop the construction. Then we want to call line trace by, uh, sorry. Why did I call it from channel? Sorry. We'll call that from camera, not channel. Line trace from camera and simply put that in there another reroute and for the output we're simply going to break our hit results and we're then going to say spawn actor from class and the class we we'll use is obviously our get class here which is going to be our parameter let's apply that there for the transform we simply want to get our impact point but we're also going to make a rotator. So we're actually going to make some stuff here. So for the impact point, we want to get it here and we want to look for find look at rotation. And the target is actor location. So what this does is pretty much we're going to be making it so that the build that we place automatically looks at the player or more or less because we're going to be making it so that it's 45 degrees looking at the player. We then want to break the rotator because we only want to once again touch the Z. So what we'll do is we'll snap to grid the float. 
and it will be snapped to, well, 45. We want to rotate it by 45 degree increments. We then make rotator. Make sure you connect it to the Z and we'll apply this here. So I'm just going to show it quickly here and then we're going to collapse it. So pause if you need to double check and then we collapse here. We'll call make rotator. So we can pull all this back now, the extra space. And now that we've created it, we need to tell it that it can actually move. So what we do here, obviously we just created a new item. So we're going to call it item to build here and apply. Then we want to call a set timer by function name. And that timer will be our move build. For the time, we'll put 0 0.05 and we'll make it looping. And the function we want to call here is simply moving build. Build, there we go. So that will call our function here. So that does it for this. Let's move on to our moving build. Do that. Now the moving build is pretty simple. We're going to call our line trace from camera. If we hit something, actually to be fair, place build no sorry spawn build here shouldn't work if we don't actually have a hit target so this should only happen on true just to make sure because otherwise it will spawn nowhere or at least it would spawn in zero zero to start and that would look a bit weird so back in our moving build if we hit something we have a reference to our item to build and we simply call update location Try, there we go. We'll reroute it here and apply like that. That does it for our moving build. Next is place. So for place, we're pretty much just going to get our reference to our build. We'll check is buildable with the function that we made. Now, by default, it's always true because we haven't set up any code for it. Apply that here. And on true. We're going to call item build place build. Now remember it has a return. So if it fail, if it succeeded, so if it came out true, I think by default it does, then we can clear the handle. So we say move build, we can stop the timer. So clear and invalidate. And obviously if we do that, we also tell the build that it no longer, that it's no longer set. Next up is the cancel. So the cancel, we're pretty much just going to call cancel build. Oh, sorry, not that one. We need to make sure that we have a reference to our item. Cancel build. Go. And we need to set item build to empty as well. So for now, cancel build doesn't really do anything except this. So it could be done in not a function, right? But because we use it multiple times, we make a function out of it. Delete build is or determine delete is next and that one's going to be about checking pretty much when we have to change the color of the item that's the main part about so our line trace again and we're going to call once again break here and what we want to look for right is we want to see with our hit actor if it is double equal so let's just connect that like that what we want to check is if it's double equal to our item to delete. So get a reference item to delete, convert to validated. And if they are equal, in that case, we don't need to do much because it already exists, right? So we'll put a branch here. If they do exist, so if it is valid and they are equal, then we do nothing. If it's not equal, then that means that we've hit a new item. So we need to call set all materials of the previous one, so the one that we hit before, back to the default. Then we need to reroute here. Oops, sorry, not that. We want to reroute. And we need to make sure that here as well we reroute. Because otherwise, if we don't connect this, then it's not going to do anything if we never had an item hit. So what we'll do here is we're going to get a reference to this again. Need another reroute, not a node like that. So we'll call a builds cast. And 
what this will do. So here again, we're going to need that. And what we'll do with this is we're going to say, well, if cast fail, meaning we hit any other object that's not a build, we're going to simply call out item to delete and clear it. Now, on the other hand, if it is something that we want to hit, then we're going to call set item to delete. And we're going to call set all materials. And this is why we created a second one. It's going to be the delete material hologram that we created. So apply that. And with that, all our functions are done. Now it's just a matter of setting, it up, setting them up with the different inputs. So let's go back to the event graph. We'll start with the left control. If it's down, it's true. If it's not, it's false. Very simple. Leave it like that. So for the scroll, the first thing we want to look for the scroll is we want to check if item to build is valid. If it's not, we don't want to do anything. What we'll do is we'll check if control is down with a branch. If it is down, we want to get our item to build, put a reroute here, and we'll call custom scroll build or build scroll. And what we want to get is our, oh, actually I made a mistake here. We, I forgot to change the actual input for our scroll. So for the scroll, we don't want a digital Boolean here. We want an one ax one directional axis, which will be up or down pretty much. So for here, we can get this, call it here, another reroute as well, and attach it there. On false, we'll be calling the same thing. We'll call from our item here, we'll call scroll build, but this time the by default one. Mouse input there. Now, next up is the confirm. So for the confirm, same thing, we want to get a reference to our item to build, convert to validated. And if it is, we want to place build. Make sure you use the default one here, not the actual one we made inside of our actor. If it failed, we want to call our item delete and check if it is valid, because we may not be using specifically the build. And in this case, we want to call destroy build here because we're confirming that we want to get rid of that specific build. For deconstruct, the next function, first we want to check if it does exist. So we're going to check is valid timer handle. If it is valid, then that means we have, we're already looking at it, so we want to cancel that. So we're going to call item to delete if it's valid. We want to reset it back to how it should be. So set all materials. Then we're going to set them back to default. And we're going to call item delete is invalid again. And we'll add a reroute here. And we're going to call for our deletes to stop the timer. So clear timer again. Here. On the other hand, if it's not true, we want to check if item to build exists, because if it does, we want to cancel that construction. So if it does exist, we'll call our cancel build here. Now make sure we choose the core function from here, not the cancel build. So if you want to be sure, just grab it from there. And what we'll do is we will set timer by function name. And so apply that here. And the function we want to call is determine delete. Go apply it there. Just like the other one, we want it to be 0 0.05 and we want it to be looping. Make sure that we select delete here and save the timer as the handle. And the last two functions we need to do is simply going to be the objects. On object one, we're going to call spawn build and the build will spawn is our support. Now for this one, we can call spawn, but we don't actually have our second one ready yet. So Let's test it out. It should be working now. If we press one, as you can see, our thing does appear. If I scroll my mouse wheel, it'll turn around. If I hold control while I do that, it will go up, but apparently the static mesh is not correct. So let's look and figure out why that is. So let's just select it and see. Okay, so it is working. 
it's just slightly higher than I would have wanted. I know what the issue is. So I did this last time as well by accident. In our build support in our static mesh by height, this is already 50. This shouldn't be 50, it should be one. That's just me being a bit stupid with my math here. So if we do that again, press one to make it appear. If we scroll my holding control, it goes up and down. Even if I keep going down here, it doesn't go any lower. If I keep going up, it stops there as well. If we left click, okay, this left click is not doing anything. Let's see, see and figure out why that is. Or oh, did I? No, that's set up. It should be working. Left click. So I'll confirm. Let's see if we're actually getting this correctly. If we press it, print, it's going. So one, we make it appear. So it is working. So the question is, why is it not placing? It's most likely the reason is because of our actual condition here. So is buildable is false. Okay. So make sure you tick this to true by default, even if we'll, later we'll have to change it. Now it should be fully functional. If I press left click, it gets placed. It no longer follows the mouse. If I add one, add another one, that's fine. Put it there. If I press F to cancel, it'll disappear. And if I normally start looking at this, it should make it highlight in red. Okay, so we seem to have an issue here. So for some reason, when I cancel here, Okay, so it still thinks they're actually building, which isn't correct. So let's go back to our event graph. So if we press deconstruct and it's not valid because we're doing another one, then we should cancel build, which I seem to have done wrong. Okay, so actually that's stupid of me. When we cancel build, we should also say to clear and invalidate timer here. Otherwise, it's a bit stupid, it doesn't work. So we're gonna clear that, remove them. Actually, we'll do it the other way around because otherwise we'll still get an error. So let's clear that. And normally right now, we clear it, we call this function and it should all work correctly. So let's spawn one in, place it. And if I have another one, I press F. There we go. So now it's working as intended. And if we hover it, obviously it's difficult to see because we don't have a crosshair right now. But if we look at it or look away, if I left click here, it disappears. It's completely gone. I can add a new one in the collisions setup. If I try and walk through this one here, nothing happens because it doesn't have any collision. The only thing we would want to set up, but I haven't done is we want to make it so that it can't hit or can't overlap with another one. So maybe we should actually modify that, but I currently haven't done that. So I might add, because I haven't set up much of the buildable conditions, I'll probably do that in a later part because this is still just the basis of everything. It's all ready to go. It just needs some modifying. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part, although it wasn't very productive. You could say we didn't make anything interesting. It's the basis that we needed to get through for the next part to actually function. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye.